to be back together and we welcome those on Zoom. Can you hear me, those on Zoom? Wave if you can hear me. They can hear me. Well done, brilliant. Right, let's start off with a prayer. Seems like I've forgotten how to do this now. I've done it for such a long time. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can join together. We thank you that we can come back together in this place. We thank you for those that are able to join us via the wonders of technology. We ask that you'll be with us this morning, that you would bless us as we celebrate this Easter Sunday. Lord, the most important day in all of history, where we remember your resurrection. You have defeated sin and death. Lord, we come to celebrate, we come to worship, we come to join together in fellowship as we sing your praises, as we read your word, as we share in communion together. So Lord, we ask that you would bless our time, bless uh, our fellowship together, work in us through your Holy Spirit that we might glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to uh, keep it very simple this morning, really. You know me, I'm simple. Um, so I'm going to read through some of the Easter story, and then we're going to share together this morning in communion. Hopefully you've all got a communion cup that looks something like this. Has anybody not got one? That wants one, good. Okay. Now, if you haven't looked, in the top, there's a little bread bit in the top, like a double top. So the bread bit's in there, in the top, and then the, the grape juice bit's underneath. I'm sure it'll become very clear as we're going through. So I'm going to read from Matthew 27. We're going to think about the whole the whole weekend of uh, Jesus' death and resurrection this morning. Matthew 27, verses 45 to 56. <clears throat> now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the temple of the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to men. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. We are going to well, we're not going to sing. We're not going to. We're going to not sing. The worship group is going to come and sing to us. Uh, thank you for the cross. <clears throat>
hard not to sin. I'm uh, going to read some more from Matthew chapter 27. This time from verse 57. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shred and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is the day after preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Uh, now we've got the video, the last of our video, uh, the series we've been having. It's really for the young ones, but I'm quite liking too. I heard him say he was going to kill the Emperor. He uses dark magic to win over symbols. He said he would tear down God's temple. We all want to get him three days. to what these men are testifying against you? Tell us, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Yes, I am. Soon you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right side of God, all-powerful, and coming on the clouds of heaven. <laughs> this man claims to be God. We don't need any more witnesses. You heard what he said.
So, we remember Jesus risen from the dead this morning. Lots of things to mention. There's always lots of things to mention. It's exciting to be back in church to mention lots of things. There's books. If you want a book, you have to do a whole other loop. Okay, so we've got our one-way system, so you have to go out that church that way. Don't run over down on the way. Okay, and uh, there's the books to give away, to read and give away. Uh, at the, on the, the table at the back, not that table, the other table in the foyer over there. Um, there's some daily bread reading books for uh, Bible reading books for the next couple of months. Um, don't forget, you have to go out that way. We're going to sing our last two songs in the car park because we're allowed to sing outside this morning. So we've got two to sing outside this morning. So at the end, there's words here. The only way out, pick up some words and we'll go out to the car park and we'll make a joyful noise. And we can sing as loud as we want. And an out of tune as you want, I don't care. It doesn't matter. We can sing. Um, also, remember on Wednesday, we've got Anne's funeral here. Uh, that's at 11.30. Um, so do remember to pray for the family and pray for that so it goes smoothly. Uh, also, don't forget if you want to come next week, then don't forget to ring me and book. You will need a space. Um, also, we need to remember to keep to the rules that we've got set, so you should all be fairly socially distanced from one another. Um, and don't stand about for hours talking afterwards, I'm afraid. You're not allowed to do that. So uh, go home and eat your Christmas, not Christmas dinner, your Easter dinner. <laughs> uh, I've got a new prayer letter from John and Sue Wilson. This is available on the BMS website. I've got a copy here. You can have a look at it. You can, if you want any more, I can print off some more there in Paris and what work they've been up to. Um, Mark's going to come and tell us about new house group books. Yeah, uh, I've, yeah, I've got a couple of things to share. First, first one is on, on Tuesday we'll have uh, a prayer meeting uh, on Zoom, so uh, you're more than welcome to come to that. Uh, we'll send an email out with the details for that uh, uh, in the near the time. Uh, and then, yeah, a week on Tuesday, yeah, uh, house groups start again. And uh, we have a, a new book that we're going to be going through that's called Caring for One Another. And it's uh, going to be slightly different in terms of it's, uh, you've got a bit of work to do in terms of you've got to read a chapter uh, before you come to each house group and then there'll be questions to, to talk about and discuss. So, so it'll be a little bit different, but I managed to read it. So I'm sure all of you will be able to read a chapter before. It's, they're not long at all, so as you can see, it's only quite thin. So, uh, so that uh, this is a, a really good book. It's it's called Care for One Another, and it, and it kind of looks at uh, how we spiritually uh, care for one another as a church and, and as an individual. Uh, how we uh, should move closer to, to each other to, to learn uh, what their heart is and, and what uh, what uh, what kind of uh, people are going through, whether it's joys or whether it's um, uh, suffering or, or whether it's sin and, and just being able to talk with each other about that and, and how important that is and so it, it's a, it's very challenging and uh, and I hope it's something that we'll uh, really uh, learn something from and and, uh, and learn uh, together which is always really exciting so thank you for listening. Thanks Mark. Uh, if you fancy going to the Baptist Assembly you can all go online every single one of you. Uh, from the 13th to 16th of uh, May, and you can get on the Baptist Union website, Baptist Together, and look at that if you want to join in with that. Also on the back, uh, out in the porch, is uh, copies of the link. We were asked especially if we would distribute them because we're having trouble distributing them at the moment. So if you want a copy of the link, the local village uh, magazine, then uh, there's some copies there if you haven't had one delivered to your house. Right, another reading, Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guard trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greet you. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now the worship group have got another song for us just now. This is our God. <laughs>
Really what I'm going to do this morning is share a few thoughts before we share communion together. I don't know about you, but we seem to be a bit more in a season of hope at the moment. I know Christians, we have hope all the time, but we often, I'm sure we've often, all of us, talked about hope in the last few days and weeks and months and probably since the last year, actually. I'm sure we've used that word a lot, all of us. We might have said this, I hope to see my family. I hope to go and see my friends. I hope to be able to go on holiday. Nathan hopes he's going to be able to take a driving test sometime soon. And where's Josh? Josh does too. <laughs> Josh, give us a date, Josh, and we'll pray for you. <laughs> no. I remember this time last year where we all thought COVID would be well over by the end of the summer. At the very latest. We had hopes for all sorts of things last year, over the last year, that maybe have never happened. We have hopes for this year as we look forward to the spring and the summer. And we're going to be overrun with babies, which is brilliant. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with them all, but they're all going to be running around and be brilliant. We're we'll tripping over them. <laughs> Perhaps the hopes we have for this year we hold a bit lighter than the ones for last year. We're hoping for life to get back to some sort of sense of normality, though I've told a few people I've forgotten what normal was like now. We've been in this for so long, I don't know what, what was normal. How did we used to do church? What did we used to live like? How did we used to do things? We've forgotten. What do we hope for in the near future? Glenn, what do you hope for in the near future? Ooh. Some holidays? Extra schoolwork? <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to go on holiday? Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? We'd all like to go on holiday, wouldn't we? It'd be brilliant to go away and not have to worry about masks and social distancing and everything else. You see, communion reminds us of hope. It is the ultimate sign of hope. And the best thing is, it's a hope that has nothing to do with us. Indeed, the hope that we have in communion doesn't even come from us. Because we are reminded as we share together in the bread and the wine, as we think about on this Resurrection Sunday, Jesus Christ coming back from the dead, we're reminded that without God, we were hopeless. And there's no worse situation to be in but to be hopeless, isn't there? To think there is nothing, I've got nothing to look forward to, I've got nothing to live for, I've got no hope in life. But that's how we were, and that's how we are without God. The hope that we have is not the hope that is just in us, not a hope that anything that we have done. And the best thing about the hope that we have in communion, the hope that we have in resurrection, the hope that we have in eternal life in Christ, is it's just that. It's not just for this life. Jesus just didn't come to make us nicer and to give us a hope for how to live a good life and how to just be nice people in this world, communion reminds us that it's not all about us, but it's about Jesus. It takes the focus off me and my life and my behaviours or everything else, and it takes the, puts the focus on Jesus and what he has done. You see, as human beings, we have a tendency to make everything about us, don't we? Everything I look at, everything I think about is about me. How does that affect me? How does that affect my world? But what about me? Communion always reminds us that we are not good. That we are sinful human beings, every single one of us. And that we are no better than anybody else. So you can look around at everybody this morning and think, you're no better than me. <laughs> we are all of us sinners in need of a saviour. It's as simple as that. The hope that we have is certain. The hope that we have is steadfast. Hebrews 6 verse 19 says this, We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. What do we have here? We have God's promise of forgiveness and salvation. And communion, as we share in the bread and the wine together, reminds us every time of how that was achieved. 
through Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. We have a hope, a hope for now, a hope for this life, a hope that God will take care of us, a hope that God has accepted us, but also a hope for eternity, that our eternal future is secure in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 12 to 28 talks about Christ being raised from the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith is in vain, and we are even misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sin. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. You see, the best thing about Resurrection Sunday, the best thing about Jesus Christ coming back from the dead is it, it's the central pivot to everything we hold dear as Christians. Christ was truly who he said he was because he said, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise, come back to life again. If that is not true, then our faith is useless. But we know that it is true. We know each one of us that has accepted Christ into our hearts, so we know because we met Jesus Christ for ourselves. And we know his Holy Spirit at work in us. And as we share communion, it may look a bit different from how it usually does. There's a little wafer of bread and a little bit of grape juice underneath. It's not perhaps how we would choose to share communion together, but as we look at the bread and the wine, as we remember Christ's body, which was given, Christ's blood that was shed for us, we remember the hope the reason for the hope that we've got, that Christ has conquered death, that Christ has conquered sin. Sometimes perhaps we can be a bit harsh on the, the disciples on that first Easter Sunday when they had no clue what was going on, they had no hope. And even when people came back saying, he's not there, he's risen, they still didn't know what was going on, they just looked totally confused and uh, didn't understand, they didn't really still have hope. What gave them hope was well, then, when they met Jesus for themselves. When they met Jesus for themselves, they finally realised everything fell into place. And they realised all that he was, all that he came to do, and the hope that they had was in him. The hope that we have is not in ourselves, not that we can be good people, not that we can do stuff to make God happy, but the hope that we have is in the blood and the body that Christ died for us, each one of us, and that by simply putting our faith in him, we can have new life, we can have forgiveness, we can have eternal life. The Bible describes it like this, just before we share together. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 to 9, talks about being born again to a living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So, we're going to share communion together. I've never shared it like this before. I've been told the wafer's not very nice. If you haven't got one, feel free to go and get one. I'm going to give thanks for the bread and the wine. Has everybody got one? Brilliant. Now you might want to take the bread, the top of the bread bit before just before I pray. Don't drop it. Apparently it tastes like cardboard, but never mind. Right, let's pray as we come and share in this resurrection meal together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that as we can share together in bread and wine, as we have been commanded to do, that we do so because we remember Jesus' sacrifice upon that cross. We remember his body that was given, his blood that was shed. We thank you for that sacrifice and we thank you today 
that you have defeated sin and death. That Jesus Christ is no longer dead, but he is alive forevermore and he reigns with you. Lord, thank you for the hope that we have in you. That we can know through faith in the work of Jesus Christ upon that cross. So as we share together now, as we share together in the bread and the wine, Lord, open our eyes to see you more clearly. Lord, help us to know that we are your children and that we can be united in Christ, whether here in this building, whether joining in on Zoom, whether uh, anybody around the world, Lord, who has put their faith in you. So we thank you once more for the cross. We thank you as we celebrate the resurrection today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we'll take the bread. You have to take the mask off, don't you? We'll share together in bread. Wait to manage to get an extra difficult one to get, to get into. Pull the second bit back. You can drink the wine. We remember the blood of Christ which was shed for us. And then you take the little bucket bit and you put it in your pocket and take it out. <laughs> worship group have got a new song for us called somewhat appropriately Calvary
you. Final reading before we go outside to sing. I don't think the story doesn't stop there, does it? Just resurrection, all resurrection, brilliant. Jesus Christ left us with instructions. Matthew 28, starting at verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Jesus left us with a job to do. That job is to go and tell the good news. And we do that in all sorts of different ways. One of the reasons we've got all our crosses outside is to tell people the good news, that Jesus Christ is risen. I knew you forgot about daffodils then. So when we go outside, before we sing, you've got to take a daffodil from the windowsill. You can take one each from the windowsill and you can put it in the railings outside to make a really nice display. So take one of the ones that's open, otherwise it doesn't look very nice. Okay? But don't take all of them because we need some left for Wednesday. There's loads left. Oh, there's loads left. Take all of them. Take as many as you want. <laughs> and we'll put them in the railings uh, to signify the hope that we have. Jesus left us with a job. The job is to tell people the good news to go out and live the values of his kingdom and to make disciples. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to go outside to sing Oh Praise the Name. The words are there, so pick up a set of words on the way so you can sing loudly. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this resurrection day. We thank you that you have tried. We thank you as we have remembered in communion your death and resurrection, your body that was given and your blood that was shed. We thank you for the cross and we thank you for the resurrection. Lord, help us to live in the light of your glorious uh, resurrection. That we might live in the light that you are alive, that you reign forevermore. Help us to have a boldness to go and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Because it's good news for everybody. That by putting our faith in you, we can be forgiven and we can be free. We can know security and eternal life. Lord, as we go and sing outside this morning, may our, our worship be acceptable in your sight. May we make a joyful noise unto you as we worship you. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, we're going to go and sing outside.